morning, Tuesday morning. Hey guys, listen, you, you were with me yesterday and we were talking about our friend, the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of the living God, the son of the living God. We, we, if you, if you, if you want to know, okay, anything, uh, don't ask somebody that's never did it and don't, uh, get information from someone who don't believe. All right. Go to the Bible, look at what God says, and then ask God for this friend to reveal it to you, this holy, holy friend, okay? And he'll share with you the things that you need to know, okay? Uh, through experiences, through knowledge, through uh, music, pictures, whatever. Uh, he'll do whatever he has to do to get to you because, again, uh, you're his temple. And being his temple, he wants his temple to live fine, okay? And so we get understanding. And once I understand something, then I can use it. Now, yesterday we said that the, the Holy Spirit is the, the, the spirit of the Son of God living in us, okay? We say, we quote these scriptures, greater is he who lives in me. You know, uh, you know the life that I now live, I live by the, the Son of God who gave his life for me. We, we quote all these scriptures and it is the same Son who walked here on the earth that's living in you now okay, by his spirit, so that you might be able to follow in suit how he did things, you'll know that this is the right way to do things. That's being led by the spirit of God. And those that are led by the spirit of God are called the sons of God. Why? Because you are following the spirit of the son. You're living the same spirit that the son lived when he was here, all right, in physical form. Now he's just here in spiritual form in all of us, all right? We go today to John chapter 14, all right? This is one of the things, we're going to cover a few of them today, uh, that the Holy Spirit does. And I'm going to give you why he does these things, because, you know, maturity is at, at stake, all right? He says here, verse chapter 14, John chapter 14, please go with me real quick. Come on now, you know, we only got like seven, eight minutes. Now, if I was on here for half an hour, we could sit here and talk about one scripture all half the morning. But come on now, let's run. You've been doing this for probably, what, 80 weeks now, something more than that. Well, let me tell you something. You ought to be down. You ought to have this thing down. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, all right, whom the Father will send in my name. This is the Son talking about what's going to happen, okay? All right, so that when it happens you'll know how it happened, <laughs> all right? And he says this, whom the Father will send in my name, all right? He, not it, okay? He, personal, he, okay? He, will, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So we have the Spirit of the Son teaching us, okay? Things that the Son himself has said. This is how you learn. This is how you know. Okay, Jesus said that. The Holy Spirit is giving me revelation on what Jesus said. So this is the right spirit. Now, if I am looking at what Jesus said, and then something is telling me to do something contrary, that is not the spirit of, of the Son. That is not the spirit of the Son telling you to do something contrary to what you've seen that the Son did. Okay? And you need to understand that so that you don't get deceived. Because if you are, if someone is, is telling you to, uh, let's down that house over there because, you know, we don't like that family. Let's, let's, let's uh, take that business over there and just ruin them by, by just saying they did this and they did that. But that's not the way the Bible teaches us to say things or to act toward people. Then that is not the spirit of God that's operating in you. Okay? That's another spirit. Could be a spirit of error could be a spirit of manipulation, could be a spirit of control, could be a lot of spirits, but it is not the spirit of God working in you, all right? Now, why do we, why do we say, well, we, we, this is important that he teach us? Well, because one of the things that he teach us is found in Ephesians chapter 4. Come on, go with me real quick, all right? Ephesians chapter 4. Now, in the book of, uh, uh, let's see, Proverbs, this talks about this word shalish that I mentioned to you a little while ago. God teaches us excellent things, and you search it all out, and it's things of threes, okay? Threes, okay, like the outer court, all right, the holy place, and the most holy place, all right? And those three, uh, you could say, outline every other three that there are, okay? Because they are the, f the first of things, in, in, in order, the first fruit of something. The first fruit is holy. Everything else becomes holy, okay? 
So when we look at Ephesians chapter 4, and uh, uh, let's start right here. Here, verse 11. All right. Real quick now. Come on. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. All right. Till we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. All right. That's the Son that's in you. All right. <laughs> Unto a perfect man. What? All right. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the sly of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, that we grow up in him in all things, which is the head, which which is the head, even Christ. All right. And it goes on to talk about some other perfect things. Now, what the Holy Spirit does in teaching us is he carries us from these three things. Here are three things. Now remember. Threes. God's always dealing with us in threes. And if you've been around me for any time, you've heard me teach this years and years and years and years ago. All right. First of all, you're born again. Okay. You get born again. That's the first level. That's the outer court. Okay. So I got born again. I don't know anything about me. I don't know anything about the devil. I don't know anything about God. But I'm in the outer court where salvation comes. Okay. And again, you know, when salvation comes, that means, you know, Jesus is Savior. Okay, now he's Lord of everything, but he's Savior when salvation comes to your house. Okay, now being born again is just the first level of where I need to go. The next level is being spirit filled. Okay, after being spirit filled, you need to mature. Okay, now again, born again, spirit filled, mature. Now, some people got born again. They got spirit-filled, but they have not gotten mature because these same born-again, spirit-filled people are still doing things that people in the world do. And they're born again, and they're spirit-filled, and they're grieving the Holy Spirit, some of the things they can do, but they are not mature. And one level is just as important as the other two. All of them need to be complete, okay? It's like you every day. When you wake up, if you're hungry, if you don't eat, guess what? You're not complete in that area. And if you don't eat and you're not complete, then you're not going to grow. All right? I mean, everything works together, and everything works together uh, in the spirit realm the same way. So the Holy Spirit is sent here to teach us. So let's look at some more things tomorrow here on Daily Bread to help you to understand the spirit of the Son that's in you does things that help you become himself present before other people. God bless you. We see you here tomorrow morning on Daily Bread.